Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Talking Disney Classics podcast. And today we want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And we are talking about prep and landing. I was trying to think what would be fun to talk about uh, for the month of December. And uh, I've always really enjoyed these little shorts uh, for these elves, the prep and landing. And I thought it would be fun to talk about. And so uh, that's what we're going to do today. This one might not be the longest episode, but it'll be fun. And uh, I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. Stanford's here. Hi, Rachel. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. I hope you're uh, doing well, having a good holidays. Having a great holiday. And it was so fun to rewatch prep, these prep and landing, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. shorts or whatever, you know, whatever we want to call them. They're uh, specials. Yeah. They're, uh, they're, they're really cute. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I think we probably could have done these on a for obscure animation as well as as for talking disney and i think they could have yeah. fit both categories i agree they kind of have been a little bit forgotten yeah absolutely but i think they're really cute and i i love sort of the tradition of the animated holiday short see i do too that was one of the things i'm so you know wanted to talk to you about i love i mean i grew up with the, you know the 30 minute animated holiday special uh and it was musty tv you know, when I was yeah. a kid, uh, the Grinch, how the Grinch told Christmas, that original animated one, you know, with Boris Karloff narrating, mm-hmm. that one is still one of my all time favorites. And Charlie Brown Christmas, I absolutely adore. And uh, those Rankin Bass ones are so fun. And anyway, yeah. those, well, some of those are an hour long. I know, and we've talked about, you no, know, we've done, mm-hmm. uh, we, we talked about those on previous episodes but anyway we yeah. love 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 this tradition yeah like there there are some really fun ones uh the uh i mean yeah charlie brown is one of my all-time favorite charlie brown yeah. christmas especially yeah, yeah. all that uh, charlie brown christmas that's the one for me mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's so emotionally true and heartfelt that uh, i don't know how anybody isn't moved by linus's rec- recitation of luke too it's just it's after after being with you know sad sack charlie brown all <laughs> the whole time and uh he he it becomes to that clarity and it's not a bad little tree <laughs> it's, bad. it's so great and that wonderful music by vince garaldi which yes. i still love that's one of my favorite christmas yeah. albums actually is that yeah. soundtrack i, and, I uh, agree anyway love, yeah love, love the, do you have a favorite rink and bass uh, I don't know if I have a favorite. Um, so no, I yeah. might, if any, if anything, it could possibly be either Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or the Year Without a Santa Claus. Yeah, that one's my favorite. Is the Year Without yeah, a Santa Claus? Yeah, uh, because I don't know. I just think it has the most catchy song. Well, I mean, absolutely, hey, Mister Snow. Yeah, <laughs> just, the Heat Miser and Snow Miser yeah. and. <laughs> yeah and just yeah so fun <laughs> so i do think i i i don't love the rank and pass as much as others some others i don't do. either i don't the, love them the thing i i guess that i find a little bit grating about them is that they're just they're a little try hard i think sometimes like uh-huh. instead of just being authentically quirky or authentically weird, it's like they're trying too hard to be quirky and weird you know, indifferent and strange. And, and, and it's kind of funny story. So uh, I, I decided I was going to do a Rankin Bass month one year. This was 2015 on my blog. Yeah. And so I had reviewed a bunch of them. By the time I got to Frosty the Snowman, I was like, I really don't like, especially like compounded. They, they get old real quick, you know, when you're watching one after another, after another. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah. And so, I'd I'd given uh I'd given Frosty the Snowman a pretty scathing review. I don't care for that one so, actually. Yeah, it's not my favorite. Yeah, and and it's not even stop motion. So you you don't even yeah, have that. it's not it's even just, stop motion. But it was funny. Uh, so when I when I got added to Rotten Tomatoes, some poor sack. I don't know who this guy was, but uh, <laughs> they had the job of going through. All of my reviews, both YouTube and uh, and uh, written on the blog, and uploading them to uh, Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I 
mean, thousands. It's, it, I can't even imagine how long because I've been writing since 2014 and this was 2019. Yeah. So five years of it was a huge, a huge, huge amount of thing, content yeah, that they yeah. did anyway. And it was just really funny because, you know, I'd done this in 2015 and I get this message from one of, the, one of my followers, like, you went rotten on Frosty the Snow. <laughs> 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 I mean, yes. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Oh, that's I was like, funny. I probably wouldn't have uploaded that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and uh, one of the things about those Rankin Bass ones too, those mo- you know, the stop motion ones. If I'm not mistaken, those are all. I mean, what do they end up being? Forty four minutes or something? But they're you know they played over an hour, right? When you're yeah, watching some on, of them on, do. On yeah, TV. some of them are. And yeah, and it's almost like that hour was a little too long. You know, what I mean, yeah. as you said, they just like. Um, Maybe trying too hard, or mm-hmm. just gets, it gets stretched out, or something. But still, a year without Santa Claus is um, mm-hmm. still super fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. That one's also my favorite of theirs. And uh, you, you even had there's even actually, believe it or not, been uh, some animated shorts on Hallmark Channel. Uh, really? Yes, I, see, I didn't know. That. <laughs> yeah, there, there's Jingle All the Way, which is it's a stop motion animated short about this little boy and his dog this is adorable and then a sequel jingle and bells christmas star and it's uh <laughs> the uh, jingle gets the so that's the dog gets a friend named bell it's really cute uh and so i'm glad that um that uh hallmark uh you know if they're going to be the the queens of christmas i'm glad that they have at least one entry well, two entries in uh, the animated. <laughs> Do they play them every year? Too, they Rachel? don't. Uh, they don't ever play, but you can watch them on their. They have a little streaming service, or on. Um, you can watch them online. Okay. Yeah, uh, because they are pretty old. They're from um, uh, 2012 and 2013. Okay. So, uh, that's you know that's why, but but um, but yeah, and actually recently there's been some some. Uh, uh, Oscar nominated animated shorts. Uh, we had um, like holiday shorts. There was Robin Robin. Oh, yeah. Uh, from Ardman, which was horrible. And then last year, uh, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse won the award for best animated short. Right. And that was a holiday. Yeah. That's kind of fun. And uh, there's also another really good one is. Um, uh, the Snowman, Raymond Briggs. Yes. Yeah, that, that one. I love that one. And the Grinch, like you said. Well, that's my yeah. Those were yeah. The, you know how the Grinch Stole Christmas and the Charlie Brown Christmas were my mm-hmm. childhood yeah. favorites, and they they still are my <laughs> favorites yeah to this day. And I really love. I mean, as we said, I just love, love, love that. That's what prep and landing was shooting mm-hmm. for yeah you know and there's just a yeah. tv holiday special just mm-hmm. that's that same amount of time and tone yeah. you know mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. uh yeah really yeah uh, and it was a pretty g- great little era for um for walt disney animated shorts uh right around uh, the these these were made uh in um uh in 2009 uh, in that era, they had uh, they had Paper Man, and uh, sorry, I lost it. In that era, they had pa- pa- they had Paper Man, Get a Horse, Feast, um, the Little Match Girl was a little bit before that. How to Hook Up a Home Theater, like there was some pretty strong, I would say. Anime it was shorts. a special time, you know, and mm-hmm. I say that with the best sense of the word, uh, you know, from from this, you know, from my outsider perspective, yeah. seeing, you know, that, you know, Cat and Little Lassiter had revived, you know, Walt Disney Animation Studios and, and you know, slash Disney mm-hmm. feature animation and the pro the content overall was was quite good. Yeah, and then you know these shorts, these shorts were so delightful. It brought back some some happy memories mm-hmm. back when 
seemed like you know things were better well and they were experimenting with different styles with paper man feast and and i i think that what's nice about shorts is they can give animators a chance to prove themselves and yes. uh, and so and in, that's the case with these you had you had uh chris williams who directed this first one and then he went on to co-direct and uh, bolt yeah that. this was this was his brainchild mm-hmm. um and uh that was it was fun you know i mean mm-hmm. he's 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 got great great sensibility i don't i, I think yeah. he's currently a netflix i think he's doing a sequel to is it to the was it the sea beast is that what that? oh yeah that was good yeah yeah i, li- yeah. I liked it he did a good job no that, mm-hmm. that he did a good job with that film and um mm-hmm. and anyway it, yeah it, are you a fan of rachel's reviews do you look forward to family movie night female film critics panels or the talking disney podcast if so please consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patreon as a patron you get to access monthly events such as the watch alongs and q a's where you get to talk to stars and find out the behind the scenes of the movie making industry and you can pick what i review for family movie night or even become a guest on the podcast Podcasts and YouTube channels are expensive and I really, really could use your help. I would so appreciate it. You also get to be a member of the Facebook group where we talk about all the films that we're seeing and we have so much fun. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies and select one of the Rachel's fan tiers. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. I think this goes a long way just on how cute it is. Like, I love the aesthetic. I love the aesthetic of the North Pole. I love the design of the elves. They're so cute. Yeah, I agree. And I just love all of the Christmas wherever. Yeah. This is like when something is great, they, they call it tinsel. You know, like, yeah. oh, that's so tinsel. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then code figgy pudding or whatever. I mean, all, yeah. all these things that they just bring in, they're just they're super clever. And, yeah, uh, I like that too. It, it reminds me of one of my favorite, and we should watch it sometime just, I don't know, see if you think it's funny, but one of my favorite, it's a lot, it was on Lifetime, uh, Christmas movies of recent. It's hilarious. It's uh, a girl, she gets caught in her Irish Christmas village. <laughs> She's in this like time loop, but she wakes up and first she thinks it's all like perfect and a dream and everything. And then it gets like, starts to unravel. Uh, and it, <laughs> anyway, it's very funny in my opinion. And, uh, and one of the funny things is in the Irish Christmas village, she can't uh, swear. Ah. she can only say like she'll say like you stocking stuffer <laughs> she's using all these yeah. christmas yeah you son of a gingerbread man or whatever <laughs> oh that's fun it's really funny clever yeah and they have a, so she starts out her her first like idyllic day everything's perfect and they have her make like a sweater as part of the day and uh and so at first you know it's like a like a classic you know christmas sweater and uh and then, like as the days go on the sweaters like evolve and, like by the end it's like black with black. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, i think it's i really think it's funny but oh that's fun yeah but anyway with rep and landing so this first one it came out in 2009 yeah and this was on abc and i guess they had had shrek the halls uh, and they, so they yeah, wanted to duplicate. That's that success. right. Uh, and I think I think even ABC was broadcasting Shark the Halls, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, I think so. That's what it appeared on uh, from the little research that I did. Yeah, so I think so. And uh, which I mean, that's not unheard of. I, Disney Channel's has has has, uh, has broadcast a bunch of DreamWorks stuff. Yeah, on Disney Channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, but yeah, and so they were looking for another, another win and, uh, and that's where these ended up airing was on ABC and, uh, the summary for this first one is Wayne gets a new rookie partner, Lanny, after his previous partner got the promotion he wanted. Lanny has to remind Wayne of the spirit of Christmas and the importance of being an elf in Santa's prep and landing elite unit. So overall, what did you think about this first one on the rewatch? So clever. Yeah. Uh, and I just, you know, I just had a smile on my face the whole time. I, really fun. The uh, 
Um, again, as we're talking about, all the Christmas references are great, and the production, or the art direction is stellar. Um, I love what the North Pole looks like, mm-hmm. and in a way, it kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Anna and Elsa's palace in Arendelle. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. this guy has kind of a similar I can see that. look, but but I but I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I just think it looks it looks really it looks great. And I'm mean, the elf design; they're super super cute. Great voice talent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, and a, I, and, a, I, and a cute and a cute little story. I have to imagine that the Ardman folks were at least a little bit inspired by this, you know, yeah. in doing Arthur Christmas. Yeah, I mean, especially it's, it's kind of a similar, elves. yeah, yeah, military yeah. style kind of operation. Yes, yes. yeah, it, which. Uh, I mean, I love both. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, yeah I, Christmas is terrific, <laughs> and I, great voice casting to get Dave Foley. Perfect, oh, absolutely perfect. <laughs> for Wayne. Fantastic. He's so good. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and uh, and then Sarah Chalk is McGee. I like McGee a lot. She's super cute. McGee is so cute and <laughs> such a great character because I think we all have met people like yeah. that. You know that are these. <laughs> Very responsible roles and so good at the job, but she's just like super wired, always caffeinated. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's and there's really a good. there's a nice attention to detail, which is something I feel like a lot of times is missing in in Disney right now. That things will just, it, and I think maybe it's just trying to get things out for Disney Plus or something, you know. And and here, like just little things like go into the effort to like the the scenes with Thrasher. <laughs> I think you're funny. So funny. Yeah. Dasher's cousin. Yes. <laughs> I am a myth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and Wayne, so Wayne doesn't get the uh the the promotion. I like when he says little drummer boy. I'm not I'm not I'm not in love with that. Okay. I'll sign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or eight maids of milking, that was the one. Yeah. I really hate that call sign. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. And uh yeah, and I like Lanny. He's cute too. Lanny, Lanny's cute. And mm-hmm. I love all the little implements they have. I think my favorite thing is that little remote control or that sensor that's shaped like a gingerbread cookie. Right. <laughs> a gingerbread man. Yeah. And uh it's got the little screen on it. And yeah. Yeah. Creature stirring, you know, Creature like it appears stirring. on the that's screen right. and stuff. Yeah. Like that. yeah. So, yeah, what they do, they're prep and landing. So what they do is they go in and they get everything ready for Santa. So he can just go in and out uh, and have a safe landing and, and everything. And uh, and he's feeling, you know, really frustrated. He's been doing this for 227 years. Yeah, Wayne's re- he's burned out. Yeah. Burned and, out. and frustrated because he didn't get the promotion that he wanted. Yeah. And, yeah. And it you know it just shows the difference between now and and then because you know you've got the kid with the camera, and you know now it would be a phone for Cell sure, phone. yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, that and they'd be presenting texts and, and Instagrams and TikToks or whatever, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so he decides that he's going to uh, he's gonna be lazy he's not gonna he's gonna let lanny uh lanny's top of his class <laughs> at the kringle academy it's a small class <laughs> uh, it's a small class yeah that's the line because <laughs> lanny is adorable but maybe it's a little challenged right mm-hmm. yeah but like heart of gold yeah and uh and they say well you're he says you're just a lump of coal aren't you and uh and and then he says the thrill might be gone for you but not for him and i think a lot of us can relate to wayne because uh, this is the thing that it's it's hard it's harder to get excited about christmas when you're an adult without any kids around it's just loses something yeah for sure it's just almost sometimes becomes drudgery you know with a lot of the work and stuff involved yeah yeah i know before i started at home Marky's podcast it would be very discouraging for me because a lot of times my parents were gone they would go visit the grandkids of course like of course you would and yeah. uh and uh and so it would just now i'm so busy that i, I don't have time yeah, you to, have time to, but i remember there was definitely some times when i felt 
very lonely during the mm-hmm. holidays. And I, mm-hmm. I think uh, Wayne's feeling, feeling a little bit of that, you know, and he, he loses the, the magic. Uh, and that's why Lanny has to remind him that, uh, that it, it's not, the thrill's not gone for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they say that it's, that it's not safe. And so there's going to be no Christmas for Timmy. Yeah, the the weather, right? Mm-hmm. Is there's this horrible yeah. storm coming in, and Timmy finds them, right? Timmy wakes up, and because yeah. because Wayne was kind of Being feeling all sorry for himself, he didn't see Watching the sensor. Yeah. <laughs> watch stuff on TV <laughs> and eating you know like that oh really, the cookie yeah that cookie that's super hard <laughs> yeah. petrified cookie yeah <laughs> yeah those those gingerbread cookies are almost never good because the thing is is if you if you want to get them hard you need them hard enough that you can decorate them but then they usually if they're if they're that hard they don't taste that good. Yeah, like, I think it all relates. Taste like, good. You know, see the same things. Like, yeah, I've, I've tried to have bite into one of those cookies. And it's so, <laughs> it's so hard. And that kind of frosting doesn't taste good either. Like the kind that looks all pretty and glossy, yeah, and you know, yeah. then so it's just it's they're pretty, <laughs> but not good right. to eat. <laughs> but not yummy. <laughs> no, I mean, what what is your go to Christmas uh, treat that you? Boy, look for that is here? a good question. You know, <laughs> um, my dear mother, you know, is no longer with us, but she was a wonderful cook and baker. And mm. she made just the best Christmas cookies and she made multiple kinds. And so mm-hmm. um, always like a really delicious sugar cookie. And a, she made fantastic gingerbread. And um, none of neither one were like the one that, you know, that Wayne was trying to eat in the <laughs> short. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd and rather just did- have a circle cookie, though, because then you can just have you can have them soft and you can have <laughs> just the buttercream. You don't have to have that royal icing, which is just not very good. Yeah, this is uh, this not very good. And and then she made this thing. Oh, I'm trying to remember what it was called. It's like this Mexican wedding cookie. Oh, I something. love those. Oh, delicious. <laughs> you know, just anyway. Yeah. So, so many fun memories, you know, of that. How about for you? Yeah, I do love English toffee. I mean, oh, any yeah. kind of toffee I love, as you know, that you yes. got me the churro toffee, which I love. Yeah. Uh, but I, I love toffee in general, but I do love a piece of English toffee with chocolate and almonds. and Delicious. And that's one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, my mom, for a while, would make these eggnog logs. It was just basically like a shortbread with an egg, with an eggnoggy kind of nutmeg, you know, in the in the frosting. Wow. That was a favorite. Those were really good yeah, too. That sounds delicious. Those are really good. We have because my mom's my mom's gluten intolerant now, and so we kind of developed the tradition of having fondue oh. at a, at a most. It seems like most gatherings we have fondue, uh, and it's also I think. Uh, well, no, I, they can have a, they can get the vegan chocolate, and so then they can. My two of my siblings are vegan now. So it's just something that pretty much everybody can eat. Oh yeah, everybody can eat. Delicious. Yeah. And uh and and so that's pretty tasty too. Hey, this is David from the Piecing It Together podcast, a podcast about movies and the movies that inspire them. For over four years each week, a guest and I take a look at a new movie through the lens of what other movies we think were either an influence or connect in some other way. It's a fun, unique way to discuss films that leads to a great list of other movies to check out that either explore the same themes and ideas or maybe utilize similar filmmaking techniques including special episodes in our side series that twist the format. We've done over 200 episodes, so there's bound to be one on a film you've been thinking about and want to dig deeper into. So check us out on all the major podcasting apps and at piecingpod.com. Then they, uh, yeah, Timmy's saying this, uh, Timmy in his sleep, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. And uh, then, and that makes Wayne feel bad. Yeah, Wayne. <laughs> that's kind of a, the wake up call for Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he says, "I have a plan, and there is time." So he gets this. There's a blow up globe, snow globe thing. And the house uh, across the street. Is, yes, uh, they've gone all out. They're the Griswolds or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, they got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he makes a, a landing strip, 
And I like keep it together, Prancer. <laughs> so fun, so clever, really funny. And uh, and then, uh, and and Wayne talks to Santa, and he's, and Santa says everyone slips onto the naughty list every once in a while. And uh, but he saves the day, and and then Santa gives him Timmy's house globe. So I guess that's how he can look in and see. Uh, Jimmy got his bike and how mm-hmm. happy he is. It's so cute. Yeah. Fun way yeah. to end that. And uh, yeah. And then he gets the promotion and uh and he turns it down. Turns I'm more down. of a prep and landing guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. Um, so it's it it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, so then the next one, the well, the only other major one, there's one that's just a, a, there's a little short, short. Yeah, yeah, eight minutes, um, is prep and landing naughty versus nice. And this one is was 2011. And Lanny and Wayne race to recover classified North Pole technology. That's a really terrible, <laughs> terrible. Uh, <laughs> this is a summary. But basically what happens is we meet uh wayne's brother and uh, no noel uh, who's a coal coal elf. elf yeah yeah that are responsible the, for the coal of the, the uh, naughty children naughty list <laughs> which is very clever clever fun. yeah you know that little ribbon they print out try harder next year or whatever <laughs> <laughs> or, or whatever it's yeah <laughs> 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 I mean, what did you think overall of this one? You know, it's cute. I think I like the original a little better. I think yeah. this one, I just felt like this one, even though I still like it very much, it's so nitpicky. I feel like it gets a little bogged down in the story, yeah. kind of in the third, you know, in the second act. But yeah. um, it it then picks up and it's it, it's 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 really cute. I think this the little the little girl who kind of is taken on down the, the system, list. who's on yeah. the naughty list. I yeah, thought that was a I agree. Cute, I mean, a cute way to do that. Yeah, you know? I think Wayne gets a little bit too mean to his brother. Yeah, I Wayne, wish I exactly. never had a brother. That sibling thing yeah. is, is is a guy that gets a bit much, I think. <laughs> but but it's still it's still cute, and I do think it's a clever idea, uh, and uh, that they have this fruitcake conductor. That- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that they have to find yeah. and uh it's, it's that they, they're attempting to access the naughty or nice database and this little girl she wants to get her name off of the naughty list because she has a new brother 12 months old and uh, since he was born and uh, nobody has noticed me since <laughs> yeah i was gonna say which i think probably a lot of yes <laughs> kids can relate to right yes. you know that mm-hmm. uh um when a sibling comes or a change comes like that, you know, that mm-hmm. rocks their world. And yeah. so I, I, I like that. I thought that was a really a nice way to do it. It wasn't like some super villain, you know, or something yeah. trying to take out Santa. It was just this this little girl who just needed some attention. Yeah. And, and then know. the uh the entire uh the entire nice list is gonna get turned onto the naughty list yeah <laughs> they're having a meltdown at the north pole because of it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah so if uh, noel is gonna be able to save the day and uh and there's the um captain A- captain avalanche and his uh sidekick snowball and uh, and that was their favorites they really wanted the sled when he, they were kids wayne did and uh, and then he says, Captain Avalanche is nothing without Snowball. And that's when Wayne apologizes for getting yeah. upset. Yeah. And uh, and then every and this is uh, all you'll always be your brother's hero. And so they um they shoot the super slide into the air and uh they uh they're able to get the everything they're able to get it to change yeah they're able to get that kind of walkie-talkie or whatever thing you know that she had yeah connected back to the north pole and Mm -hmm. and all 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 as well as cute and lanny plays us more of a supporting role in this one because he yeah that's true i love i think again it's super clever that 
they they've got like those ornaments that turn into some kind of a sleeping dust or something. Oh yeah, and that's you. Know, how, like, we learned that in the first film how that's how they take out like the dogs or whatever the animals that come after them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, but it's harmless. It just puts them to sleep so then they can get their work done and get out of there. Yeah. But, Lanny got hit with one of those, and so he's like asleep through half of the, uh, you know, through half of it, which is fine. Yeah. It did, I don't think mm-hmm. feel like it was a bad thing because it's really you know about the brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, and then they say then there's no better gift than family, and Wayne and Noel win Elf of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's cute. It's it's really cute. It's cute. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. The final one is called Prep and Landing Operation Secret Santa. And... This is a, they, they get called for, they have a secret contact in, and it turns out it's Mrs. Claus. And Voiced by is, Betty White. Yes. Which is fun. Which is super fun. Yeah. Cause I don't know. I'm trying to think, did she ever do anything for di- anything else? Was she ever, you know, voice actress for Disney? No. Uh, she, if I'm not mistaken, the golden girls sitcom. Oh yeah. Was, was made by Disney. And and uh, that's right. Of course, you know she was, was great. and then also that, if I'm not mistaken, that time period, Betty White had this resurgence, and you know they got her to. It was like this through popular opinion or whatever. Or she got she hosted Saturday Night Live, and you know she was just kind of like riding a wave of everybody was loving on Betty White, which was fun, you know, because she's such she was such a yeah. great com- such a great comedian and. Uh, you know, good for her. Which, what, I'm seeing, I'm looking at her filmography. It's saying she was in Toy Story 4? What is that? Oh, yeah. You know, I think she was a voice in Toy Story 4, but I don't think she had much of a part. I'm trying to remember, remember that. what uh, what she, um, what character she played. I think she was one of Sally's toys, you know, and there were, some of those were almost like, I don't wish to denigrated to stunt casting but they kind of work because they didn't have a lot of lines mm. um if i if i'm if i'm remembering correctly we'll have to say look yeah at, uh, i mean yeah. she did some voice work on on sh- tv shows that were disney's like teacher's pet and and um things like that um i was gonna say the wild thornbirds that's not disney that's nickelodeon but um but i don't see any of their features um, yeah, she, this character is it's a it's called Bitey White. This is in Toy Story Four. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think she ever did an. I don't even. I don't feature. even remember this toy. Yeah, this I don't episode. remember it either. I think it just was very. <laughs> you know, it was not. It did not have a lot, a lot of screen time. No. All right. Uh, oh yeah, because Carol, Carol Burnett. Oh really. Was, Mel Brooks, Carol Burnett, Carl Reiner, and Betty White um, all voiced, I think, toys, uh, you know, that that were at Bonnie's at Bonnie's house. Yeah. But, so they uh they need to get this box from Santa's office. Uh and it, there's a a little uh flight of fancy where they get put on the naughty list. They have this like nightmare scene, which was kind of funny, I thought. Yeah. Santa finds them. And uh and yeah, that's when I, when I said, this is so tinsel. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah, they get the box, get out on time, and it ends up being a wheel piece from the first toy he ever made. Yeah. Which was cute. It was cute. You know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's really, it's just super cute. And mm-hmm. I'm, I frankly, I'm glad they really went for, to make it a true short. 
Mm-hmm. You know, just like an eight minute short rather than stretch that story mm-hmm. over twenty two minutes. I think that might have been also like, Ugh. yeah. Uh, but uh, but because they did it this way, it's it's adorable. Yeah, and this was yeah. two thousand ten, so it was actually in between. Yeah, the it was two. in between. Yeah. And I think it just was on ABC, Rachel, if I'm not mistaken. Probably, I don't yeah. think I don't think it was like put in front of a theatrical release or anything that I'm aware of. Yeah, um, it says um uh the short premiered on TV ABC. Um the second half hour Chris of Prep and Landy Naughty versus Nice aired on let's see, let's see. Oh wait, I don't know when this this shorter one did. It but it was said, ABC. Yeah. Um December seventh, twenty ten, is what mm. I see, but I don't know if yeah, that yeah. Was with something else. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's cute. It's it's fun. I wish they would do more. I really would. I would. Like I to do see too. More. If I was thinking the same thing, I thought that would really be fun if they mm-hmm. if they uh, did did some more, but. Again, we don't know what's happening at yeah. Disney Animations. And I, I heard somebody saying that I guess at Hollywood Studios they have a a thing, a, a, a light show or something, or a well, prep and landing. Uh, you know, themed. that's a good question. I, I thought they had a light show that 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 that, that is projections on front of the Chinese Theater, mm-hmm. you know, which is kind of like the quote unquote castle of the of that park. Yeah. And they call it they called it jingle bam jingle boom. And I wonder I I'm trying to think if I've seen it. I think one of my I know one of my friends has seen it. Oh yeah, but, jingle bell jingle bam. Oh okay. Yeah. And I know that they quote that. I mean, don't isn't that a, one of the sayings because I was that triggered my memory when I was doing this rewatch like I wonder if it's related to that show that was Hollywood Studios. Uh, and I don't even know if that show still exists. But, uh, you know, if they still do it. And how Prep and Landing, you know, what role they even played in it. Yeah, I the just remember, I, you know, because I incessantly watch these, obsessively watch these park YouTubers. It's ridiculous. Even though I have no intention of going to Disney World anytime soon, I watch these shows. And, uh, and they were saying it. I just remember one of them saying, like, I would probably like it more if I was a bigger fan of the prep and landing. It's like, oh, oh interesting. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. Mm-hmm. And, and I, and yeah, I think it based, was part on prep of... and, based on prep and landing, featuring yeah. fireworks, projection mapping, fire lasers, fog effects, and searchlights. Interesting. Mm. Okay. I had, so. I didn't know that prep and landing were. Clearly, I guess I haven't, I haven't seen it. The prep and landing were like kind of the key characters <laughs> yeah. in that. Interesting. Did you hear about this um, Jollywood Nights thing? Fiasco? Well, yeah, it sounds oh like it gosh. was a fiasco. Uh, I'd be so mad. Yeah. I, I made $180. So much money. Nothing is free. Like nothing. Yeah. At least with like the Oogie Boogie Bash, which is the only hard ticket event I've ever been to. But uh, with that, like you get all the trick or treating. There's so many characters you can meet fairly easily, and uh, and so there's there's uh, there's quite a bit of free stuff. And, you know, I mean, not free. They, you pay for it, but right. like to pay 180 dollars and everything is is additional cost is you know, crazy. This, and what I you know. I haven't. I, I mean, truth be told, I haven't done a lot of follow because I, I'm. i I know that Disney's made some changes after that disastrous yeah. first night, but like people were waiting forty five minutes for like a cookie. Crazy. And yeah. and, and uh, to pay for the cookie, that they they the Gertie the dinosaur wow. cookie. Yeah, is that Gertie the dinosaur? <laughs> it wasn't even cookie. like it at the um very merry. Uh, yeah, where they the, give out you know quote unquote so free cookies, cocoa. right, or complimentary yeah. cookies. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. I would be so mad. I can't even imagine. I but, think a lot of people were, and they were yeah. putting it on YouTube. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but but you can watch these cute, adorable, uh, and remember the glory days of Disney. You can watch yeah. them on Dis- Disney watch Plus. It. Remember happy, happier days at Disney, and <laughs> hopefully we'll get back to something like that. Who knows? But you know, yeah. No, they always so. do. They always have a renaissance. It's true. It's true. They always it? come back. We're kind of in the like 
home on the range days and yes. uh, <laughs> and they come they come back so yeah yep we totally are and a uh, little so, home on the range <laughs> just waiting to see if they realize uh, that's my only concern but with the <laughs> with the dismal box office <laughs> i mean not I, I think that that's, I mean, because who, who loves to make money more than Disney? But it, you know? It's just um, hard. It, it's hard to understand when they're making choices like Frozen 3 and Frozen 4 and Mufasa. And you're just like, what? Yeah. But um, it'll probably take a couple of years and then we'll see yeah. that, um, you know, that full, that full, uh, I guess, renaissance. Let's hope, hope, hope. <laughs> Let's hope. But uh, but these are really cute and yeah they're cute uh, on Disney Plus nice thing for the holidays all three of those so so fun and yeah quick quick watch and you know one thing that I was thinking about Rachel and not to you know continue to be negative but <laughs> um I, I probably need to do a better job about rewatching these because I just as you said maybe these kind of fall into the obscure animation thing at the moment because they're just not really either yeah. promoted or. or and and maybe not not as like rewatchable as some of these classics that we were talking about, you know, like a Charlie Brown Christmas mm-hmm. uh, or how the Grinch stole Christmas. But they're still super cute. Yeah, you know? it's still really fun. I'm, and I think it's super fun for families. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that they are really well animated. There's an attention to detail in the stories and the world building and the yeah. in yeah. the the writing sharp. The voice acting's good. So they they're just definitely worth checking out. So, yeah, let us know if you're listening what you think of these shorts. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments uh, or on Twitter. You can find us at, at Disney Talking. And uh, where can people follow you, uh, like on Instagram and stuff? So, Rachel, I've got a um, blog and podcast, as you know, at moviespastandpresent.com. And my Instagram feed is at movies, P-A-P, as in past and present. And we have some ideas for coming up for the next year for Talking Disney because we have kind of, I think, pretty much exhausted most of our friends as far as doing these ranking episodes that we've been doing. And we'll yeah. still probably do those from time to time. Yeah. But um, but uh, what so what I was thinking would be fun. We could still do like an occasional. There's a lot of Pixar's that we haven't done. Other you know other things. Uh, but um, what I thought would be fun is we would do some episodes with more niche rankings uh so we'd have like we could do an episode on under and over we could do an episode on uh um we could do an episode on like ranking the disney princesses or uh side characters or songs or villain songs or you know what i mean like there's tons of different topics that we could do episodes on and so if you're listening and you have ideas for rankings that you think would be fun and you'd like to hear our opinions on uh, put in the put in the comments, and uh, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Ron Tomatoes. So check that out. Let's see. Also, make sure that you check out our full playlist of all of our Talking Disney episodes. We'd love to have you look at all the back episodes. And uh, if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is the best way you can support us. Really appreciate that. And then also have our merch store. You get hashtag animation junkie shirts and I'm an animation girl shirts. So take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Yay. Ho, 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 ho.